I haven't been all that impressed with some of the maps that Valve's accepted into TF2, but there is one that caught me by surprise when it was added, and that map is Helltrain, a community-made Halloween map that was added to the game in 2022. Your typical Halloween map comes with things like the Underworld, Pumpkin Bombs, and Spells, which gives them their own unique aspect that we don't see in regular or Smithsmiths maps. And no, let's not talk about bread space. While Helltrain does have all of these things, it has so much more that gives it its own special distinction across all maps in the game. And in this video, I want to explain why and walk you guys through some of the technical aspects of this map to gain a better understanding and appreciation for how it was created. So let's begin. The first thing I want to talk about, which is perhaps the most obvious, is the train. In-game, it looks like it's chugging along the track through a variety of wild environments, but in reality, it isn't. In fact, the map doesn't actually move, it's everything around it that does. Just like how the Earth is the center of the universe and everything orbits around us. In this case, it's the props and skybox, or skyboxes, that do. These giant wheels on both sides of the train, as well as the smaller ones up at the front, aid in the illusion that the train is moving because they're both dynamic props with built-in animations. And if we load up these models in Half-Life Model Viewer, we can see exactly which parts of the models are moving. These animations are activated by the Set Animation input, which runs whenever the map loads up or a new round begins. And their speeds are controlled by the Set Playback Rate input, which you can see is triggered by a number of different events. These different parameters for the playback rate input are what give the illusion of the train speeding up and slowing down. And speaking of slowing down, the sparks behind the back wheels are info particle systems that are turned on and off upon the execution of the Skybox Coaster Anim 6 relay, which is intertwined with a bunch of other logic, but all you need to know is that it's connected to the whole process that goes on in the roller coaster section, which I'll explain later in the video. So now that we know how the train gives off the illusion that it's moving, let's take a look at the sky, which is without a doubt the most remarkable aspect of this map. Each time the map loads or a new round begins, one of the following five skyboxes is randomly selected by this logic case entity. Ocean, desert, hell, forest, and castle. And each time the train enters this portal, which spawns at the conclusion of each skybox stage, a new one is picked at random to take its place. The roller coaster skybox, which is undoubtedly the best of the bunch, is enabled when rolled by the Wheel of Doom, which runs each time one of the five skyboxes is activated. Now if you know anything about the skybox swapper entity, you may think that that's what's responsible for the swapping of these skyboxes, but that's not actually true. You see, the skybox swapper entity changes the 2D skybox, which is what you see in most TF2 maps when you look up at the sky. And while Helltrain does have a 2D skybox, it never changes, yet we only see it in the desert and forest stages. The roller coaster stage does look like it uses it as well, but in Hammer, we see that it's merely a copy, and I'll explain why the mapper did this in a bit. I want to take a moment to talk about the Wheel of Doom. Now, this wheel isn't unique to Helltrain by any means. After all, it's been in the game for years and goes by the Wheel of Fate in Ghost Fort. But on Helltrain, it does have some special roles. In the Wheel of Doom Pick Logic Case Entity, we see all of the possible outcomes in the Outputs menu. The first of interest is what the mapper refers to as Swords. The icon associated with it, which we see in the Wheels Diffuse VTF file, looks like a regular scout with a stretched torso, and that's exactly what this ability does. The other ability, called Spiral, coincides with the Spiral icon, and that's the role that takes you to the roller coaster section. In case you haven't figured it out already, this map takes advantage of 3D skyboxes, which are all bundled together off to the side of the map. To keep things as simple as possible, 3D skyboxes are just regular models that are scaled up in size when placed around an entity called Sky Camera. And if we search for it in this Entity Report menu, we find that it's right smack in the middle of all of these skyboxes. It all makes sense if you imagine the train being right on top of this entity. Everything around it is scaled up. Now, if we double click on one of these skyboxes, for example, this ocean one, we see that it's enabled by this relay, and double clicking it, we see all of the stuff associated with that skybox. For example, this line right here is responsible for activating the Wheel of Doom right after a new skybox loads. And there are a lot more outputs here responsible for enabling and disabling certain things, but going through each one would be too tedious for this video, 
So instead, I'm going to jump straight to the Inputs tab, which is where we see the Skybox Random Entity, which is what I referred to earlier as Logic Case, which is the driving factor behind the random selection of this orchestrated chaos. Alright, so hopefully you understand at least a little bit about Skyboxes and how the map changes. So let me explain how the coolest part about this map, the roller coaster section, works. So here I am back at the roller coaster skybox with this crazy drop and loop, and I've hidden everything so that there are no obstructions. Since we know that the train can't move, there's only one way for all of the craziness to happen. If I position myself on the track just like we see in game, double click on the skybox, and then the model tab, there are six actions and a reference. The reference is the starting point, and the ride sequence starts with action one. As you can see, we're starting to go down the track, and if we select the subsequent actions, we go through the entire ride. And just like I described previously with the wheels, the speed of these animations is controlled by the set playback rate input. The illusion is easily broken if we zoom out and then run one of the animations. In this case, action 4. You can see the skybox rotating around the origin, which is where the train is, so throughout the entire ride, the skybox is rotating in perfect sync with the train's wheels, game audio, and other effects. How cool is that? Another thing I find cool is these two jump pads in the middle of the map. There's one that takes you to Red's roof, and another to Blue's. While I created my own boost pads in a version of Bad Water I made called Boost Water, these are the only jump pads you'll find in an official TF2 map. And unlike Boost Water, which uses trigger impulse entities, Helltrain uses what are called trigger catapult entities, which launch players along a set path once they've made contact with this trigger region. It's a small addition to the map, but it allows players to reach the roof areas much quicker, and I just have a lot of fun using them. So the last thing I want to go over is this little minigame area that all players are teleported to in case there's a draw, which takes place in the Hell Sky Box. All of these cubes you see mark the locations of this lava rock platform, and this logic timer entity sets a random time interval between 6 and 60 seconds for each platform before it descends into the lava, killing any leftover survivors if they haven't already killed each other. It's a neat little area that you probably wouldn't experience in your average game of Helltrain, so props to the mapper for throwing this in. Everything I've described about Helltrain makes it one of the most innovative maps in the game, and that's not even taking into account the things that I didn't talk about in this video, like the map layout and custom assets. It's clear that Helltrain took a long time to make and that the mappers were extremely dedicated to the project. And for that, I salute them for bringing us what may perhaps be the most unique map ever in Team Fortress 2. Thank you for watching, this is LED switching off.